have a motion today, but one thing's indisputable. America's not going to stop exploring. Thank you, Columbia, Challenger, Discovery, Endeavor, and our ship Atlantis. Thank you for protecting us and bringing this program to such a fitting end. God bless all of you. God bless the United States of America. Well put. Atlantis is back from the final space mission ever, ever for that type of spacecraft. It landed at Florida's Kennedy Space Center just before 6 a.m., and thousands came to say goodbye. But Captain Chris Ferguson says it's not the end of America's mission. And given everything that, that I know today, uh, I think that we'll be, uh, we'll be traversing back and forth a low Earth orbit uh, with uh, one of the four or five uh, vehicles that are being considered right now. Uh, I think that that's going to be a, a well-traveled path. I think that we're going to have uh, people uh, spending either short or perhaps long periods of time uh, in orbit who have um, you know, paid for a trip there. We're joined right now by NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden from Cape Canaveral, Florida. Very warm Cape Canaveral, I'm sure. Now listen, it's an emotional day for everyone involved with the space program and for Americans as well. What are your thoughts now, sir? Well, I think the mood down here is incredible. I, you, you know, we just came from a celebration with, uh, with all the workers here, with Atlantis in the background after we brought it off the runway. And it, it's an emotional high right now. I think everybody's still riding on the, the probably one of the best flights we ever had. Yeah, it, you know, we had uh, Beyonce wake up the astronauts one day. We had Cool in the game. <laughs> We'd celebrate. But I thought, I thought it was fitting that this morning, their last one, their last wake-up call was God Bless America. It is a very fitting wake-up call because, as I tell everybody all the time, this was America's program. This was not, not a NASA program or anything. The space shuttle belongs to the, to the taxpayers of America. You know, it was an investment that they made, and while people can debate about whether it was worth it, you can't put a dollar value on uh, the discoveries that came from the shuttle program, the Hubble Space Telescope, the International Space Station. Uh, when, when the space shuttle program started, there was no such thing as dark energy and dark matter. 98% of the universe we now know a little bit more about because of Hubble, and that came from the shuttle. Well, well Mr. Bolden, we're turning it over to uh, business, the business of commercial partners. My question is, why not wait until that's at least ready to happen before we end America's access to space? Well, you know, commercial entities, and we probably chose the wrong word. Industry has been has been dominantly in charge of the space program for many, many years. If you go into the Mission Control Center in Houston or the Launch Control Center here down at the Kennedy Space Center uh, and go on console, you wouldn't find very many NASA engineers. Uh, in fact, you probably wouldn't find any NASA engineers. The programs are run right now by a company called United Space Alliances. They've been doing it for a number of years. So they do operate the shuttle. They just don't own it. Uh, what we want to do differently, because it's incredibly expensive to own and operate, we want to let com the, the commercial providers, we want to let, let American industry now own the vehicles, and we will, we will pay them for the service. Uh, so that's really the only difference in where we are today and where we're going. When you look at, at science missions, uh, today we buy the we we lease the vehicles from uh, from commercial entities from from commercial companies. Uh, one of them being Orbital Sciences Corporation that launches satellites for us. We don't build the rocket. We don't build anything. We go to Orbital Sciences and says we got a satellite. We want to get to orbit. How much how much would you charge me? And that's been happening for many many years. So. There's not really anything new that we're going to be doing. It's just the concept. It's difficult for people to understand. Museum time for Atlantis? Uh, you know, Atlantis is going to be on display here forever uh, at the <laughs> Kennedy Space Center. I think it's a fitting place for it to be. Um, it, it was the first vehicle that I commanded, you know, when I moved into the left seat. And so I think this is an appropriate place for it to be. The, the people in, in Florida really fought for it. Uh, they have millions of people who come through here each year from around the world, and it will be a very fitting place for Atlanta, for Atlantis to be displayed and, and shared with people, not just from America, but from around the world. Well, we're going to miss it, but, you know, we're excited to see what's on the horizon. Major General Charles Bolden, thank you so much. Thank you very much, and uh, it's a great day for America. I hope everybody's uh, as euphoric as we are down here at the Kennedy Space Center right now. All right. Thanks again, sir. Landing gear down and locked.
most of you likely sleeping this morning when an era came to an end. Atlantis touched down at 527 a.m. here in the east. It's safe for return home, the final act in a space shuttle program that spans three decades. Many at NASA see a period of uncertainty now. I'm sure next week when, you know, usually when the one mission gets done, we're getting ready to work the next one and go back to the office and there's not a next one to work. That's going to hit a little hard. NASA's administrator, though, tried to accentuate the positive. This final shuttle flight makes the end of an era, but also the start of a remarkable new chapter in our nation's story of exploration. Children, some of them here earlier, who dream of being astronauts today won't get to fly on the space shuttle, but one day they may walk on Mars. Your views about the space program, well, they've changed with the times. Back in 1961, in the Cold War days, 51% of Americans said it was very important to stay ahead of the Russians, the Soviets in those days, and other countries in space. 38% say that now. So what should happen next? 54% of Americans say private companies should take the lead. 38% of you prefer the government should stay in the lead. Let's take it some highlights here. Number one, that final flight of Atlantis. Let me bring this right up here to show you. Third, the last 30 minutes, it's 5,000 miles from the landing site. Five minutes, it's 25 miles from the runway. 15 seconds, the main nose and the landing gear are deployed. Touchdown, the orbiter touches down on the runway. It's traveling at 226 miles an hour. That's what happened today.